Hey everybody, Mr. Anderson here. Uh, welcome back to another edition of Geometry. You may wonder, hey, why is that flag waving behind you? Well, it's Veterans Day, and so in honor of Veterans Day, I've uh, got the flag up there waving today, and just want to say, uh, if you've ever served uh, in the military, uh, just I thank you for your service, and uh, just want to uh, honor you uh, today as we as we celebrate that. Um, all right. And also, actually, it's my brother's birthday today, too. And so let me say happy birthday, Joel. Um, it's uh, it's been a long time that we've been brothers. Um, but anyway, and by the way, by, uh, there's no correlation between parallelograms and my brother. I'm not trying to say he's a square or anything like that. Um, no, no correlation at all. Um, all right, what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about parallelograms, and so our objectives are we're going, we're going to recognize the conditions that ensure a quadrilateral is a parallelogram and prove that a set of points uh, forms a parallelogram in the coordinate plane. Okay, so this is going to be very, very similar to what we talked about in the last section, just kind of coming at it from an opposite way. Instead of saying, you've got a parallelogram, what does x have to equal? Now we're going to say, hey, you know, can this be a parallelogram or um, in order for this to be a parallelogram, what would X have to be? So it's very, very similar. All right, first thing is, um, just like we talked about before, if a quadrilateral has uh, each pair of opposite sides parallel, it's a parallelogram, okay? Just like we did before. Uh, secondly, actually, I never got my pen going here. Um, secondly, <laughs> If um, the opposite sides of a quadrilateral are congruent, then it's a parallelogram. And we talked about that before. Um, third, it says if the opposite angles are congruent, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. We've also talked about that before. So here that is again. Uh, last time we also talked about this. If the two um, diagonals bisect each other, then it's a parallelogram. So if we can see that, that's that's a, proves it's a parallelogram. And finally, this one we did not talk about last time. <clears throat> In this one, it says if the two opposite sides are both parallel and congruent, then that means this also has to be a parallelogram. And so if, if you think about that, if these two sides are exactly equal and they're parallel, well, then these other two sides have to be parallel as well, and they will also be equal. All right, so let's see what can we what can we do with that. We're going to look at a number of situations here where we have some information, and we're going to just determine is this a quadril is this quadrilateral a parallelogram, uh, or can we not tell? Or maybe we can tell there's no way it can be. But we can't just go on what it looks like. We can't just say, hey, this looks like a parallelogram. Yeah, it is. We have to know. We have to know exactly why. That's what the justify your answer here. All right, so if we look at this, we say 35 and 35, 20 and 20. Well, those are opposite sides, and they're congruent. So we can say, yes, the this is a parallelogram because the opposite sides are congruent. Okay, so that's our justification there. We, can, we know that the opposite sides are congruent, so we can say, yes, this is a parallelogram. All right, next, how about this? Well, what do we have here? We've, we know that the opposite sides are congruent 15 and 15. We don't know anything about these sides, but we also know these are parallel. And, and that is one of our, our tests to show that. So we can also say, yes, these are, this is a parallelogram because opposite sides are both parallel and congruent. Okay, so, so the opposite sides are both, they're parallel and congruent. So that means, yes, this is a parallelogram. All right, what about this one? We say, hey, these are parallel, and it looks like a parallelogram, but remember, we can only go on what we know, and all we know is that the two opposite sides are parallel. We don't know anything else. And so, you know, what if this top side was a little bit longer? It could still be parallel to that, but it would make this um, side over here not be parallel to that side. And so we would have to say no on this one 
And basically we could say there is, we don't, <laughs> I don't know why I just dotted my O there, but um, we pretend like we are Swedish, okay? So um, there is uh, not enough information. Actually, I am Swedish. Okay, next. Uh, what about this one? Um, opposite angles are congruent, 50 and 50, 130 and 130. That is one of the tests. And so that says, yes, we can say, yes, that is a parallelogram because opposite up angles are congruent. Okay, so opposite angles are congruent. And so, yes, this is a parallelogram. All right, what about in this one? We don't know anything about the sides or the angles, but what we do know is we've got a diagonal here, and these two parts are congruent, and these two parts are congruent. So in other words, these two diagonals bisect each other. They split each other into equal parts, and so that's one of our tests. Yep. So we can say the diagonals... bisect each other. So that's our reasoning there is the diagonals bisect each other. So yes, this is a uh, parallelogram. All right, what about this one? Well, we know that the opposite sides are congruent, but we don't know anything else. So in this case, that's not enough information because what if, you know, these could be congruent, but what if they weren't parallel? What if this one was angled up a little bit? Well, it wouldn't be a parallelogram because we don't know it, that it's parallel. And so um, in this case, we would have to say no. And again, there is not enough information. There is not enough information. Okay. Good. Now, this, this example two here is pretty much exactly like what we have done in the last uh, section in 6.2. We're just coming at it from the opposite way. So instead of knowing that this is a parallelogram and finding X and Y, um, the question says, hey, find out what X and Y have to be in order to make this a parallelogram. But it's it's the same exact thing. And in this case, we know that side AB has to be congruent to, or has to be congruent to side uh, DC. And side AD has to be congruent to side BC. So that's our, our two equations there that we're going to write. First of all, for X... 4x minus 1 has to be equal to 3 times x plus 2. And we'll solve that. So distribute the 3. 4x minus 1 equals 3x plus 6 minus 3x plus 1. And so x equals 7. And then the other equation says that 3 times y plus 1 has to equal 4y minus 2. Again, distribute the 3. So 3y plus 3 equals 4y minus 2. I'm going to go minus 3y plus 2. And 4y minus 3y is just y. And then 3 plus 2 is 5. And so y would equal 5. Okay, so x is 7 and y is 5. Same, same uh, process that we did last section. Okay, here is a summary kind of over uh, what we just talked about. I, I think it helps to have this all on one page here so we can uh, look at this. Uh, the ways that you can prove a parallel parallelogram is uh, a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Um, these are the ways. First of all, the two, both pairs of opposite sides have to be congruent. All right. Both pairs of opposite sides have to be parallel. Okay, this is the one that we're talking about here. Uh, if one side's uh, pair of uh, sides is parallel, but not, not the other one, not enough. They both have to be parallel. The second one is when the both sides are congruent. So the opposite sides have to both be congruent would make that a parallelogram. If only one side was congruent and not the other, not enough information. They both have to be congruent. Uh, the third one says the opposite angles have to be congruent. Not just one set of opposite angles, but both 
sets of opposite angles. Um, the diagonals have to bisect each other. That would be another one, which would mean that this uh, part uh, of the diagonal and that part are congruent, and also uh, the other one gets split into two equal parts as well. And finally, uh, if you have one set of opposite sides that are both parallel and congruent, then that also would make a parallelogram. Okay. So last couple of things here we're going to do, we're going to look a little bit more at coordinate geometry, uh, just like we did in the last section. And um, this time they give us this, they give us the points here, Q, R, S, T. And we've already plotted them on the graph, and we're trying to figure out if it's a parallelogram. Well, before, what we just went through was they gave us, they said, oh, these sides are congruent or these angles are congruent. We don't know any of that now. All we know are the points. And so what we have to do is figure out how we can uh, come up with enough information to know. Well, and it tells us here, first thing that, that we can use is what's called the slope formula. Remember, we did that before. If you remember, the slope is rise over run. Or in other words, you could call that y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So that's our slope formula. So think about the slope in a coordinate plane here. If TQ and RS have the same slope, then they're parallel. And that's one of the things that we need to know to make this a parallelogram. We need to know that both sets of opposite sides are parallel. So if we just do the slope formula for all four sides and compare them, the two opposite sides should both be have the same slope. If it is, it's a parallelogram. If it's not, it's not a parallelogram. Okay, so let's let's work through a few here. So let's start with uh, let's start with TQ. We'll start with this side right here. So the slope of TQ. So we're going to TQ. We're going to use these points right here. I underlined them so I can easily find them, so I don't mess up um, writing them in here. So we're going to do y2 minus y1. So I'm going to do negative one minus 3, and then x2, which would be negative 2, plus 1, because that's minus a negative. So this is going to be a negative 4 over a negative 1, which means the slope is 4. Okay, so the slope of TQ is 4. Now let's check the slope of RS. So now we take the slope of RS. So now we're going to use R and S, I'm going to circle those. So that's going to be the same thing, Y2, negative 3 minus 1, and then 2 minus 3. So that will be a negative 4 over a negative 1, and look at that, it's the same slope. Yay! So it's the same slope. So what that means is TQ and RS are parallel. So that's good. I still have to make sure the other sides are parallel. But at this point, if these are not parallel lines, if these do not have the same slope, you would not have to go any further. You could say, mm, this is not a parallelogram if these weren't the same. But since they're the same, now I have to check the slope for the other two sides. So let's check the slope for QR. And so QR, let's see, I'm running out of ways. It's QR, there's Q and R. So I'm going to check those two. I'm using these two points, so I'm going to go 1 minus 3 and 3 minus a negative or plus 1. So it looks like that's going to be a negative 2 over 4, which is a negative 1 half. And then we want to do the slope of ST or TS. So that's going to be these other ones here, too. So I'm going to go negative 1 minus a negative, or plus 3, and negative 2 minus 2. So that's going to be 2 over a negative 4, which equals a negative, what am I doing there? Negative 1 half. So it's the same. So again, it's the same slope, and so what this means is, yes, this is a parallelogram. And our, our justification there is showing that we had the same slopes 
and the same slopes. Okay, so that's how we can prove that it's a parallelogram by using the slope formula. Here's a, another way that we can do it is using the midpoint formula. Okay, now this one it's not graphed out, so we're going to quickly graph this. Negative 2, 2. So there's a point, 2, 0. Uh, 1, negative 5, and negative 3, negative 2. Okay, so here's our quadrilateral. Now our goal is to figure out, is that a parallelogram? Okay, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to change the color first of all. I'm going to go to some kind of a nice purplish color. Let's see what that looks like. Um, what I'm going to do is the midpoint formula you can use um, with the diagonals. So I'm going to draw. Boy, that's hardly different there, isn't it? Oh, well. I'm going to draw the two diagonals there. And what we're going to do is the midpoint formula. Remember, we did this before. The midpoint between these two points and the midpoint between these two points should be exactly the same. So that's how I'm going to determine if this is a, a parallelogram or not. If the two midpoints are the same, then it's a parallelogram. And if they're not, then it's not. And so, so let's find um, the midpoint first of all, of what's this, negative 3, negative 2. So we're going to find the midpoint between this one and 2, 0. Okay, so between H and F, we're going to find the midpoint. And the midpoint of FH. And again, so what we're doing now is we're not doing the side. We're not finding anything with the side. We're finding the midpoint of the diagonal. And so remember, what you do is you add those two together and divide by 2. And so I'm going to go, I'm going to add the x's together. So that's going to be 2 plus a negative 3 divided by 2. That's your x value. And then um, 0 minus 2 divided by 2. And I guess I put that in parentheses in a little earlier. OK, you get the idea. So what this is, is 2 minus 3 is a negative 1, so it's a negative 1 half for x, and that's going to be a negative 1. Negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. All right, so the midpoint is negative 1 half and negative 1, so it looks like right about there, and that's pretty close to what we've got. Let's find the midpoint of the other one, which is uh, the negative 2, 2, e and uh, G. So we're going to find the other diagonal, which is E and G. Let's find the midpoint of that. All right, so again, we're going to add the x's. So negative 2 plus 1 for x divided by 2. And for the y's, it's going to be 2 minus 5, or 2 plus a negative 5 divided by 2. Negative 2 plus 1 is a negative so it looks like it's negative 1 half. And then 2 minus 5 is a negative 3. So that's going to be a negative 3 halves. Ooh, you notice, look at it. It's a little bit different. The first number is, is good, neg negative 1 half. But instead of negative 1, we have negative 1 and a half for EG. And so that midpoint is going to be at what? Negative 1 half and negative 1 and a half. That midpoint's like right about here. Notice it's slightly off. The other midpoint was like right here, and this one is right here. So they're a little off. They're close, but they're not quite exactly right. And so in this case, we would have to say, no, this is not a parallelogram because um, the midpoint of the diagonals is not the same. Okay? All right, one more thing, and I'm not even going to go all the way into this. This is the same problem that I, the first one that I did. But I just put it back up here again. We already know that this is a parallelogram. But I just wanted to just give you a look at the distance formula. I don't think I'm going to work out this whole thing. But what I'm just going to say is this. How you could use the distance formula 
to, uh, to show that this is a parallelogram is remember the opposite sides of a parallelogram have to be congruent. So what you could show is using the distance formula, you could show that QR, the, the distance of QR is equal to the distance of TS. If you can show that those two distances are the same and that QT is equal to RS, this side and this side, if those two distances are the same, then this is a uh, parallelogram. And if you remember the distance formula, distance formula was the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. All under the square root there. So remember, that's the distance formula. So what you would do is you would just take each one of these points for QR and plug it in here and find the distance of QR. Then you'd find TS and plug those points in and find the distance. If they're the same, then you continue on. If they're not the same, you know it's not a parallelogram. And then you'd go and do QT and put those points into this formula and RS and see if that's the same. If both of these work out to be the same, then you know it's a parallelogram. If not, then it's not a parallelogram. So you can kind of see there's a lot of work going on there. It's a lot of plugging in and going through that. And the, the video's getting uh, pretty close to where I want the, disc, the, the, the time to be. I don't want it to be much longer. So we'll call it a day uh, at example 3C. Anyway, appreciate you being uh, with me. Um, uh, for this edition in geometry, um, happy Veterans Day and happy birthday, my brother Joel. Bye.